Hey there, I am back with another deck review, and today we're going to be looking at Stone Garden from Black Ink Playing Cards and designer Jody Eklund. Now, Jody Eklund is one of the best designers in the industry, supremely talented, and he's started doing a few decks that are kind of more standard decks. Definitely elevated, still feature a lot of his fantastic artwork, but using standard quartz and much more functional designs overall. This deck is kind of in that, in that same vein. Now, if you saw the Kodiak deck that I did a review of last year, kind of follows in that same theme overall. This deck, however, is inspired by gargoyles. And gargoyles are some of the beautiful stone carved creatures that you'll see up on the sides of buildings. They serve several different purposes. They serve a functional purpose to help funnel water away from the building. During a rainstorm, you'll often see water just sort of coming out of the mouth of the gargoyle in kind of a really ornate fashion. Uh, but they were also used as a symbol by pagans back before the church was around. Uh, the church ended up carrying that symbol forward and using gargoyles on a lot of their buildings. Some people believe as a way to kind of connect with the pagans as they tried to convert them. Others believe they actually use their gargoyles to scare away evil spirits, just like the pagans did. Whatever your belief though, the gargoyles, they are absolutely ornate and beautiful pieces of architecture, really great additions uh, that add a lot of character to any building that they're on. Uh, so that was the theme or the inspiration behind the deck, but let's take a look at it and see how it comes to life. All right, starting with a tuck case, it's on a really nice black matte cardstock, nice thick stock to it overall, and it has the feel as if it's embossed. It's actually not, at least I don't believe it's embossed. It's all done with this really heavy layer of UV spot printing throughout, which gives it a texture kind of like embossing. If I tilt in the light here, you'll see that clear UV printing that just glows and almost feels like it's embossed same kind of texture to it overall. The UV printing is done with a nice floral pattern in the back, kind of a damask looking pattern. Really nice look to it overall, very ornate. And then in gold foil in the front, you have the gargoyle head uh, in full display. Large gargoyle with a ring in its mouth, kind of that menacing look that you'll often see with gargoyles, those sharp fangs and that hideous looking face. I believe that the gold here is actually stamped on top of some of that UV spot printing to give it that texture. Could be wrong on that, but that's kind of what it looks and feels like to me. And at the bottom here in this sort of quilted area, you have Stone Garden, the name of the deck in nice small gold letters. On the sides, more of that UV spot printing, that floral pattern, and the little floral emblem there in the middle in gold. Same thing on the other side. Bottom has your ad copy for Jodia Kloon, Black Ink Playing Cards, and Legends Playing Card Company, who printed the deck. And the top just has the name of the deck, Stone Garden. The back gives you more of that floral pattern in the back in the UV printing. And then in gold here, you get a little bit of text that tells you about the story of the deck. It just says, it is believed the church originally used gargoyle statues as a visual reminder to their pagan converts. They were something of a sermon in stone. Basically saying that the Christian leaders would use these carved stone creatures as something of a sermon as you walked into the church. And then it says at the bottom, ex exquisite playing cards. Inner flap here, more of that same style printing, gold floral emblem in the middle, more printing on these flaps and nothing on the interior of the top. So that's the tuck case. Really nice, clean, elegant look to it overall. The black and gold's a classic combination. Looks really, really nice on a shelf. So that is the tuck case, but let's get into the cards and we'll start with the back design. And here it is. Now at first glance, this may look metallic. It's not metallic inks, but it is a combination of sort of a flatter silver and then this antique gold color, uh, kind of a dingier, or darker gold color. Really nice weathered, older look to it overall and a big, bold, ornate design covering the entire card. Of course, your eyes are immediately gonna be drawn to those two gargoyles in the center, the menacing, almost evil look in their eyes as they kind of stare right at you. And then they're surrounded by both silver in the middle and then that antique gold on the outside, patterning with vine work, leaf work, kind of floral elements mixed in there. Really ornate look to it overall, nice two-way back design, and then finishes out with that antique gold poker border around the edge, nice and thin. 
So nice look to the back design overall. Uh, really like the artwork on this, lots to like. All right, now into the extra cards. You get a pair of Jokers, one in this sort of gold color and then one a little bit more red. Uh, they both feature a black and white image of a gargoyle in slightly different poses on either side, both of them perched atop a column. And then in the background, you get that same little floral element that we saw on the tuck case, one in gold and the other in this metallic pink or red color. I really like this color. This one's not one that you see all that often on decks and a really striking look to it. So there's your two jokers. Uh, the four aces are gonna look at next. Ace of spades, definitely the power ace of the bunch. The spade pip itself is this rounded shape, almost kind of an egg shape to it overall. Barely recognizable as a spade pip. Uh, and it features the gargoyle head in the center, surrounded by little circles. It's a stone garden on one side, and on the other, sermon in stone. Lots of kind of wrought iron feeling curls and twists, filling all the little details, giving a really nice look overall. And then I love these little flourishes at the bottom, just adding extra flavor. Uh, it says black ink playing cards at the bottom. Once more, that mysterious floral symbol at the bottom. Pip and index in the corner are custom. Really fancy font to the to the index in the corner, and the pip's really tiny and has kind of a gothic feel to it overall. Really fitting since the gargoyles are common in gothic architecture. The other three aces are a good bit more standard. They obviously have customized pips in the center, especially that club pip. And the red cards are kind of that pink uh, metallic color. Completely metallic ink on those. Really love the glow of that. Uh, it's nice departure from the classic red. So there's your other three aces. Now the number cards are all relatively standard. Other than having those custom styled pips, which are a good bit smaller, but laid out standard. Uh, not too much custom otherwise on these, nothing too fancy. I, again, love that red color that's used on these. Nice ornate font uh, on the indices in the corner, but still really easily readable. So nice uh, nice design overall to keep this a really functional deck of cards, in my opinion. And then there's the hearts. And then we get to the quartz. Now, I mentioned before that these are riff off of standard quartz. They are, however, completely redone, redrawn by Jody Kloon. So they're kind of the black ink standard quartz, if you will. Same ones, basically, I believe, that were used on the Kodiak deck. Uh, different index and pip in the corner and different coloring on them overall. Uh, they're all done in these really ornate styles, clean redrawn faces, and they're recolored to use a mixture of three different metallic inks. You have that antique gold, a little bit of the uh, metallic red accents, and then silver as well. The trio kind of has a washed out look, but still bright and vibrant at the same time with that gleam of the metallics. It's a really nice overall structure to it. Love the color scheme, and yet still the really familiar feel to them overall. So there's your spade pips, or spade quartz, and then into your diamonds. Then looking at the clubs, and finally the hearts. Like I said, functional, easily recognizable, but at the same time, given some extra flair that helped these court cards feel a little bit special despite them being standard, if you will. So that is it, that is the deck. Now, as far as handling, this was a little bit of an experiment by Legends Playing Card Company. Uh, they did this on what they're calling their stud finish, and they said they imported a coating from the US, first time they've used it on a deck of cards. And according to them, it produced the softest deck that they've ever had. And I gotta say, I'm impressed with the handling, highly impressed with the handling on this. Uh, they fan beautifully, really smooth right out of the box. And they definitely do have a softer feel to them. Maybe not as soft as like a true linen finish from, uh, from Cardamundi, but much softer than the thicker and stiffer cards that you often get printed from Legends. So big fan of what they did on these. Nice soft cardstock, really uh, thin feel to it overall. I'm a fan of the handling. I'm not huge on handling typically, but if you've liked Legends in the past, try these out. You may like them even better. If you haven't liked Legends, give these a shot. These may kind of turn your mind. 
Uh, so that is the handling of the deck. Now, as far as uses, I would say, personally, I'd probably look at this as a gameplay deck first and foremost. It's meant to be a functional deck, easily readable, easily usable, and yet still has that little bit of elevation that'll kind of bring some extra flair to your game. You could certainly use this for magic. It's functional enough for that. Uh, cardistry, it, it handles well enough for that as well. But I think gameplay is really going to be where I would stick with this one. So that's it. That is the look at Stone Garden from Jodia Clune and Black Ink Playing Cards. Great deck. Definitely one worth checking out if you don't already have this one in your collection. So I'll put a link down in the description where you can pick one up if you're interested. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more deck reviews and unboxings, and I'll see you for the next one.